in today's tutorial, we're going to go step by step on how to create this particular satisfying cutting animation. So let's start right off. We're going to start by deleting the default cube and adding in a cylinder. Now, from this drop down menu, we're going to increase the vertices. We're just going to have this 32 into 4 just to make it a lot smoother. Then we're going to rotate it on the x axis by 90 degrees and scale it on the y axis by 10 or maybe 5. Then we can scale it down on everything but the y axis. So we hit Shift Y and we say 0 0.5. Now that we have the cylinder that's going to be cut in our animation, we can go ahead and place the camera. So I hit zero to go into the camera view, select the camera and change from perspective to orthographic. Then we're gonna also change the resolution to a vertical aspect ratio, which is 1080 into 1920. Once we have that, we can go and just change the orthographic scale so that we come out, make sure that we also move the camera back in the real world as well. So just shift G, hit G to grab it, but hit shift Z so that it doesn't move on the Z axis. Okay, just zoom out a bit, G shift Z and just move it back by quite a bit. And then look again, and then just hit N, view, camera to view, hit N again, and then just turn the camera accordingly till you get an orientation that you actually prefer. So in my case, I think I'm going to go with this particular orientation, maybe change the orthographic scale to just 16, and there we go. Now we can go ahead and add in the ground plane. So Shift A, Mesh, Plane, GZ, make sure you hit Control so that it goes down by exactly one unit, then Scale, maybe 10 for now. Once we have that, hit 7 to go into the top view, hit Tab to go into the edit mode of this plane, Control R to create a loop cut, and then just click once and then drag it till it comes outside the cylinder, and then click again to lock it into position. Control R again, and then just repeat the same thing on all four sides of the cylinder. So once you have all four loop cuts set in, you can then switch to face select mode, select the face, and then hit E to extrude it on the Z axis by default and just move it down so that you have a hole as well. Then you can actually select everything and just scale it up by maybe 1.1 so that everything is just a bit larger than the actual cylinder that's going to get cut in. Once you have that set up, you can again tab into edit mode, go to edge select mode and just select all the edges. You can hit shift plus alt and select one edge to select all the edges on that particular side and then just scale it up. Oops, make sure that you don't have anything else selected. So just select only the edges on the outside and just scale it up till everything is covered even in your camera's view. So I think our camera, we can actually just move it in a little bit more. So maybe an orthographic scale of 15 or 12 might also work. No, we'll go with 15 itself. Now that we have this particular Scene. Maybe we can change the angle a bit more. Maybe this angle looks better. So all of this is up to personal preference. And now we can change this to 14. GZ, move it up by one more. And there we go. Or in fact, let's change this to 18 so that we have some extra space. And just shift and move it a bit to this side so that we have space for the cutting object to move out. Now that we have this selected, let's go shift A, add in another plane, then let's go out into seven, then just scale it on the y axis by quite a bit, then go tab to edit mode, I to inset, and just reduce the size a little bit. Make sure you select the outer edges and then just scale it on the x axis so that, that side comes up as well. Once you have the sides to be evenly sized, select the outer edges, 
then again e z and just shift it up a bit make sure that you have the center face selected make sure you're on face select select center face x and delete faces tab now take this just grab it z axis and just shift it down okay now if you take a look at it it should look better okay now that we have this we can take this particular object we can in fact scale it down by just a bit and also give it a bevel modifier so add a modifier bevel and just increase the number of segments and the size of the bevel as well so once you have this make sure that everything is aligned correctly i don't want this outer edges to be seen so i'm going to take this scale it down on the x-axis just like that there we go now if we move this on the z-axis it should perfectly fit into the hole great now let's take our light source hit alt g to remove its location then gz to just move it down into the actual hole and let's change the color of the light as well to some sort of a reddish orangish color now that we have this set up let's go ahead and create another light or let's go to the world settings and just increase the brightness or decrease the brightness completely hit shift a add in an area light gz the area light up increase the strength to 10,000, and then just scale it up gz so that it lights everything accordingly or maybe you can change this to a sun change the value to like five and also change the color to something slightly bluish just grab this on the x-axis and just shift it out right about there let's select our camera and change passport out in the viewport display all the way to one so that nothing else can be seen so that there are no distractions now let's take our sun our area lamp change it back to area itself actually make this 10,000 again and shift d grab it right like that and then just rotate it there you go shift d like this and rotate it like that and there you go now you have something that's lit from all directions of course area two we can change the power to maybe maybe 5,000 and area one we can change also to 2500 and there you go now let's take this create a new material for it and make it a lot more metallic and reduce the roughness so metallic and reduce the roughness take this click new increase metallic and increase roughness as well you could reduce roughness or increase it really about personal preference as to what you personally like i'm going to keep the roughness completely up and i'm going to change the color as well to something a little bit more reddish i'm also going to take my original point light that i had shift d y and then shift d y so that we have three point lights just acting underneath right there from which we have light coming out maybe this one i can change to 10,000. okay that one maybe g x it a little bit and just g z it down there you go let's also switch on bloom and clamp that at four or maybe don't clamp it next we actually have to create the sub cylinders so let's go out let's go to three let us go to solid mode let's first give this cylinder its material actually so material new material this is also going to be metallic with high roughness okay now that we have a high roughness metallic value let's also switch on screen space reflections let's switch all of this off so that we see what it looks like let's go ahead and figure out what looks good for this material reduce the metallicness reduce the roughness
All right, I think this works for now. Now we go ahead, switch this on, go to solid view, three, shift D, enter, tab into edit mode, GY, hit control, and just move it till the origin point, that little yellow dot that you see, that yellow dot should match up with the base. Make sure that you're hitting control so that you know it aligns properly. Once you have that, tap back out. So once you have that, grab it on the Y axis till it lines back up. And now simply scale it on the Y axis down by 0 0.05. Once you have that, Shift D, Y, and just select it till it moves. Before you do that, Control Z, just add in a bevel modifier to this. So bevel. And again, increase the number of segments to maybe five, increase this to maybe 0 0.015. And once you have that, shift D, Y, and just move it till it aligns perfectly to the previous one. And then shift R to repeat the action till it covers. Now that you have all of them, just select all of them. Make sure that you have this two individual origins selected and just scale it down by maybe 0 0.95 and hit enter. Now that you have that set, we can go ahead, look back in the camera, view, and go to rendered view, great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this outer cylinder that we had vanish. And it's gonna vanish by using a Boolean modifier. So we're gonna have to click on Boolean, and we're gonna have difference between this and some other object. So we have to create the object source. Shift A, mesh, cube. So let's scale up the cube to match the dimensions of this particular cylinder. So scale Y and just grab it till it's larger. Then again, G, Z, grab it till it's just above. And now we don't want the cube to show up in the render. So we click to this object properties. We go to visibility switch off renders and even viewport display we don't want to see it all the time so we're just going to change display as wire that way we can still see it but it's completely see-through and it doesn't hamper our work process so now in this particular cylinder the difference object we're going to select the cube so now whenever the cube comes in contact with it you see it disappears and that allows our inner cylinders to show up. So now make sure that when we actually have this, we change it to fast because exact takes a lot more computing power that we don't want it to. So now we need to have the object that's actually gonna cut it up. So for that shift A, mesh, click on plane, go to seven, scale it on the Y axis, exactly to the right size. So that's going to be a scale of five. Once we have it scaled up to five, tab, control R, and then add in 10 loop cuts or 20 loop cuts, was it? 20 loop cuts. So once you have 20 loop cuts, it's going to perfectly align with the 20 cylinders that you have inside. But we want some sort of a handle as well to this, but we'll deal with that in a while. So first we're gonna take this, we're gonna actually create use geo nodes which we didn't use the last time, but GeoNodes just makes this better. So we're gonna change this, go to Geometry Node Editor, click New. This particular geometry that we have, we're gonna hit Mesh to Curve, Mesh to Curve, and then we're going to change it back from a curve to a mesh. Curve to Mesh. And in the Profile Curve, we're going to choose Curve Circle. So we have the group input, the mesh being curved changed to a curve, then the curve being changed back to a mesh, but having the profile as a circle. Now the size is way too large. So we're gonna reduce the radius all the way down to 0 0.001. Okay, maybe 0 0.01. Amazing. So now that we have that, double tap A, see how it looks. Let's go back to rendered view, and there we go. So now we need to give this some sort of material. 
So let's just go here, click new. And then from here, we have, also have to click on set material and make sure that it is changed to material 004. Now material 004 is going to simply be something emissive. So let's just change this to five and there we go. So now we have the emissive object that's going to cut it. So now let's grab it on the Z axis, shift it up so that it perfectly aligns with this box. And once that happens, let's start off with the animation. So let's make this a 10 second long animation. So 300 frames at 30 frames per second. So we have to go to our output properties and make sure that we change this frame rate from 24 frames per second to 30 frames per second. It's right over here. Once we have that, let's say it takes two seconds for this entire object to come down. So just G, Z, and let it go down till there. Hit I, location, also at zero or at frame one, G, Z back up, hit I, location. Similarly, we're going to do the same thing for this at 60, GZ, move it down, hit I, location. So now when we actually watch the playback without any of the overlays, it looks like the object is getting cut. Okay, when we look at it from our camera's perspective, it also looks like the object just got cut. So that is great. I think maybe I will select both the box and this plane and grab everything to about frame 90 so that it takes three seconds for the cutting to actually occur. So now that the cutting occurs, in the next half a second, let's say 105, I want only the base object to just move on the x axis away and then maybe a little further. So GX, maybe one more, and then hit I location. And then I want all of the objects to start falling. So let's take this first object and then just drop it down one by one. So how we're going to do this is we're going to add in a keyframe for every single object, just the location of the keyframes. So select everything, hit I, location, and now select the first one. Let's go up by five frames. G, Z, down there, I, location. Now let's just take a look at that. And let's actually make this 10 frames long, A, and then change, hit T and change this to bounce. So now it's going to actually bounce up as well, but we won't necessarily see that in the first one, but we will hopefully see that in the later one. So once we have that, let's change to the graph editor. Make sure that we have none of the others selected except for the Z location. And then just control C. So this drops off at 110, it's out of the view. So at 110, we want the next one. Make sure that we have just the Z selected and hit control V. Then let's go front by five steps. Select the next one, select the Z location, control V. Then go up by five steps. Next one, select Z, control V, and then go up by five steps. So I'm going to do this for all of them and we'll just speed up the process for that. Now that we have all of them set to fall down, it doesn't look like any of them are falling nice enough. The bounce is not really seen. So that, okay, the bounce is seen, but it doesn't look that great. So what I'm gonna do is go back to our timeline, go back and select everything again, then hit T, Bezier. So now hopefully it looks a bit better. Yeah, I think that looks fine. 
once everything falls down, I want this particular object to start moving back. So we have our location. Then it took 15 frames, so another 15 frames, 225. I want it to get this position back. So Shift D, bring that right here. And then Shift D, and just bring that up. I don't think it should take the same amount of time as it did to take, go down. So maybe another 15 seconds. Let's just move that. Um, another 15 frames, so half a second. And then from inside, we want a cylinder to come out. So how we're going to do that is we're going to add in another cylinder. We're just going to duplicate the first cylinder that we had, this particular cylinder, and remove the this cylinder. We're going to shift D, Z, and just have it present underneath right there. We're going to remove this Boolean from it. And then once we get to that frame 40, we hit I, location, and then maybe 50, 270. So we'll make this a nine second animation. So at 260, we just do GZ and lift it back up to the original position, I, location. We change this to end at 270. G right there. So there we go. So now when you actually play it without anything, it should look just like this. Maybe now we can add in a few peripherals just to make this entire thing look a bit better. So the first thing that I want to add is some sort of a mechanism that's actually moving this instead of having a floating plate move about. So right here, I just added in whatever these objects are to act like as if it's going to be pulling it. So I've added a constraint so that they maintain the same Z location as this particular object. So I've just made it to the Z and it perfectly maintains. However, I need something that actually connects to this because it still looks like it's floating. Okay, now just to attach this on, I'm going to tab into edit mode and then I'm going to select two of these edges. I can't tell if I'm selecting any of the edges, but let's just see. Yes, okay, I was. So the x axis. And just put it there. Now let's take a look.
that's pretty much the end of this particular video. I really hope you learned something. And of course, you can incorporate these techniques in various different ways. We do definitely try out seeing what the horizontal aspect ratio looks like as well. And we did make one or two more changes after this before we rendered out the final version. But all of those are artistic freedoms that you yourself can take while creating this in your own method. So hopefully you enjoyed the final product that we got from this, and I hope you learned something. If you wish to purchase the final product or the videos that were rendered out, you can check them out from the Patreon that's linked in our description. So until next time, stay creative.